to escape the tower that are made of gold and wax and he's like don't fly too close to the sun because then your wings will melt but don't fly too close to water because then your wings will fall apart what happens is that Icarus ends up getting engulfed with the freedom that he has been now given and kind of disobeys his father not intentionally but you know just kind of overwhelmed by it and he um, ends up kind of plummeting to his death blah, blah, blah. but there's also another perspective that the reason that Icarus did this was because Icarus fell in love with the beauty and the um, kind of strength of the sun but here with my um, picture we have the body it's a surrealist piece so our body is a like wax candle and this would be what um, symbolizes Icarus but in our hands would be more so what is um, the embodiment or personification of the sun here it talks about the love story in which you can have somebody that is the light of your life but also at the same time you have to step back and kind of look whether or not this person is the light of my life or are they melting me down being in this relationship and it's a change in perspective of whether or not this is beneficial for me or is it harmful and kind of the recognition of self-preservation if I need to step back is in order to preserve all of myself as to be whole and kind of the importance of prioritizing yourself first and the hands not only to like kind of go along with the whole sun floating up in the sky um, are detached from anybody in particular because the person who is lighting the other person and melting them down doesn't exactly take responsibility for their whole um, shazam. Right here goes in with the love story behind Paul, um, yeah, his name, I don't know. But um, he's a sculptor and he hates women, surprising, because I, you know, I'm a woman, so, and you know, empowerment. But anyway, um, so the Greek sculptor, he hates women, but one day he decides if anybody can make a perfect woman, it's me, because I'm a good sculptor. So he ends up making um, a sculpture, and he ends up falling in love with her. And Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love, is so moved and powered by this um, kind of like significant, significant change between like emotions that she um, grants the sculpture to become a real life person. And for me, um, I've tried to do the same thing in which I did kind of use my friend as a reference and base, ignore that. But um, anyway, I tried to make my perfect ideal love in like the way or what I would find in an ideal boy and however I would find him in the way that I can with drawing, which is usually what I used to like, how I started off with artwork was more so with the sketching and drawing. So I kind of went back to that original art form that I always have loved and felt comfortable with. However, for me, I am able to do the outside and the um, kind of like physical features but I'm still trying to figure out what I want inside which is why there's like a gap that's kind of there however I also in other paintings you can see have a um, desire to remain golden so I would have to feel in order to satisfy that desire the uh, person would have to be the golden lover so there's a little specks of gold in there um, we move on to my piece with um, King Midas or for me Queen Midas and basically so with her um, it comments on the story behind King Midas is a um, king who was very overwhelmed and consumed with his desire to be very greedy and wealthy and he's granted with the ability to touch things and turn it into gold. He ends up though getting corrupted and um, overwhelmed within his power and he accidentally turns his son into himself gold and that's supposed to symbolize the corruption. However for me it's not exactly a corruption but more so the um, overwhelmness of trying to self-preserve myself to stay golden as in that is a um, motto that I like to live by. And um, with this, I can you can see my kind of desire to stay golden is more so with my personality or my appearance within the heavy use of always um, putting on makeup, and that's another art form that I like to express myself through. Um, however, we have the two different textures seen here um, with the more of the molding paste that gives it that nice gold texture of like the hard metal. We're in juxtaposition with the um, the acrylics, which is what this painting is made out of. It gives it that more of that pop art smooth um, feel of like marble or anything that you'd usually see Greek sculptures with. Um, we move on to over here with the hands and the set of hands. And then um, this goes back to the labyrinth story in which a princess, um, I forget, Adriana, I think it's her name. She goes in to give her soldier who's going to go fight the Minotaur, which is this um, half man, half bull beast that is hidden down in this maze of, that her father owns. And he's going to go defeat him. But um, she wants him to be make sure that he's able to get out of the maze once he defeats him. So she gives him um, a string and he's like, come back to me, kind of in a Hansel and Gretel sort of way. And But so this also ties in with the um, cultural reference, like I said earlier, to the Asian belief that um, your soulmate is tied to you by your pinky and engulfed in red string. That no matter how far, how tangled and whatever happens to you, you'll always still be attached. 
But here we have the chronological order of before the entanglement, the actual entanglement, and after the entanglement. But here for the prior to the entanglement, you have the bond being held um, and symbolized through a grasp of hands. And they're entangled within the shred string to show that. They're also along on the um, on a circular platter. And the circular platter is to symbolize the um, perfection or unity, a lot with like wedding rings you see nowadays, or any ring in particular. That's supposed to symbolize the um, foreverness within the bond. But um, then we have our entanglement and our kind of like, where things kind of go awry. And here afterwards we have, you see only one hand left. And the hand's a little tattered, a little broken. The platform is different. Whereas this platform, instead of being circular, is a little um, harshly cut and stacked on top of each other and staggered. And this is a show the kind of symbolize of rebuilding yourself up after something um, such as tragic of this entanglement or complications in a relationship goes. Without this too, um, the string is more loosely between the fingers as the person is trying to get off the string from them. And we see even the fingers are broken off because that is to symbolize of losing yourself when you um, lose a port, an important person to you because you must also like cut a little bit of yourself off because they have now um, entangled within you. And we see this at the end with a severed tie. And even though you might not want to let go of a relationship, it's probably the best for your well-being, which is a lot of what this is portrayed. Um, Self-preservation. With this one, this one is a self-portrait. If you didn't know, you didn't know. Yeah. Um, so, and um, and very important piece to me because I love sunflowers, but the sunflower goes beyond that. And for me, um, kind of, it's always something that I've seen with my influences, with art, with Van Gogh and stuff, and even more, um, just in everything. But even like down to my rings and stuff. But um, the sunflower origin story in Greek mythology has to do with um, a nymph who is like a minor goddess and god of like the forest and like nature and stuff like that. And she ends up falling in love with Apollo, but Apollo rejects her and she kind of like goes and pines away and is very saddened by this rejection. So in Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love recognizes this sadness and kind of sympathizes with her and she turns her into a sunflower which is supposed to explain the natural phenomenon as to why the sunflower always um, follows the sun throughout the day. So, hence being a sunflower. Um, along with this too, we have with um, more complex aspects of this painting, um, personally, we have it with flowers kind of are supposed to be what identifies the person, not the actual like identifying factor of the person. So the face is um, covered by the flower. Um, this is supposed to hide actually the eyes, which I find is something very important and um, identical when you're picking people out. Personally for myself, I find this to be um, personal because my eyes are two different colors, so it's always something that I've been able to like pick out for myself. Um, and, but yeah, and then other features are covered up. With this one, however, this doesn't exactly have a Greek origin story, but it does have um, a lot of meaning with the fact that soldiers and stuff, um, when they were going off to war a lot with like World War One and World War Two, the a lot in place in places like Germany, the um the wives and partners of these soldiers would put little um forget me nots within their hairs and stuff like that. So that when they were going off to war they wouldn't forget them. Here I kinda decorated somebody that used to have um, great importance to me and value and forget me nots as we are no longer really friends or anything, but I still am hoping that I'm able to positively like have an impact on him for the remainder. And that also has to go with the positioning of the paintings, um, of them being kind of facing in different directions, because we used to grow together and now we grow apart. So um, the flowers also cover his eyes as that is an identity or a um, part, like a portal to the soul, as to say. And he had another like remarkable trademark for his eyes as he did have a birthmark that kind of went into his eyes. So yeah, that's why that's kind of covered. And the flowers were also a, um, his state flower from where he was from. So anyway. Um, but in all that, like, you know, sad sappiness, my, you know, so my flowers are kind of bigger and more complex with the background, and too, there's more development and depth within the shading and stuff. And that is to um, also kind of make the commentary that I outgrew him as the thing, and that the separation of us was kind of for the best. Um, for my last couple of remainder of pieces, it has to do with Medusa. And this is a little bit more abstract, so not a lot of people were able to pick this out as of the other paintings. Um, here it has to do with more a color theory that we're depending on and with the abstract um, fluid art is the technique that is being used here which kind of is a um, technique in which you use science which is really cool because I like both science and art 
and you're able to measure out the different densities between the art and measure the different densities between the um, paints in order to get them to flow on top of each other and get that pattern that you want. Um, basically, so this refers to the story of Medusa, who you can have two different perspectives on it. Either she was gifted with her ability to have snakes as hair and to turn men into stone um, for punishment or whether it was um, for protection for her own good after being caught what happened in her temple, but I won't really go into that. But um, anyway, so with the color theory here, we have the kind of black and white to go in more with like the Greek myth, um, stones and like things a lot that you see with that type of artwork during the time, but also with her being able to stone people. But the green comes in from like the snakes as she is a symbol of snake. And usually um, the snake within literature and stuff like that is perceived to be bad and um, have a very negative connotation. But however, with literature, like we learned in English, it um, when a snake is paired with a woman, it actually means empowerment. And for me, the snake means empowerment because it is a person, um, personal connection because each layer as the snake gets rid of old skin is kind of a renewal of rebirth or like a cycle. And um, that ties in along with a lot of like personal connections as my name is Stacy, which is the short inversion of the Greek or Latin Anastasia, which also means resurrection or rebirth. Um, then it comes into these two final little pieces and these are kind of what have caused the woman to need that protection of herself and kind of like harm, so she doesn't get harmed again by love. So, not to be harmed, but you know, that's anyway, that's strengthening your backbone. But down here is two different types of loves, and we have the symbolization of the short, passionate love. And this is the reason it's, um, you can identify this as being short and passionate, as that the different colors are warm and stuff like that, and um, very enamored. And we have the, I, you're able to pick out the different variations of colors. Whereas with this one, we have more cool, where there is an incorporation of a little bit of hints of yellows, as there was happiness throughout this relationship. But um, with the cool blue colors as they mix together, it shows the long-term relationship as everything kind of fades within one. So, and yeah. Beautiful. Woo! Great job, Stacey.